record. So, in your opinion, do you think um, a large crowd versus small crowd has any effect on your overall standing record in the end of the year? I mean, I guess it's, that would be kind of like something you can actually prove, right? I right, mean, which so is what we're trying to do. But I, I just don't know. Want, I, want I don't know. To... Yes, I don't want right. to. <laughs> I think it has an effect on the game. Right. But I, I, I don't want to try to make up numbers right now <laughs> randomly. So, um, I don't really So, if you want to ask, how, how important is it to have a, a large crowd here for, for the players and the way okay. that they play? That's fair. Um, I, I think it's incredibly important. I think they add, or I think our students specifically, lead the energy in the building. I think it bleeds to the rest of our crowd. And I think they have an effect on the, the way our players feel that they're supported. Um, and I do think it has an effect on the way the other team feels in terms of the environment and how intimidating it can be and how focused they can be on what they're supposed to be doing. Um, so yeah, I definitely think it has an effect. But now how it affects our record, I, mean, I think you just have to go look at the attendance numbers right. versus the wins and losses to determine that. Perfect, thank you. How do you feel after two games? I feel like we're in a good place. I um, specifically as it relates to how we performed from game one to game two. You know, we're still in the mode of we want to be better every day, and so that's our focus. Is how do we improve? I thought we improved drastically, uh, rebounding wise, taking care of the basketball better from game one to game two. Uh, we obviously were able to show that we can be a team that doesn't have to live and die by the three ball. We can play inside, um, and so I was encouraged by that. Lindy talked about how in practice to get the freshmen ready for the road game, the older guys are kind of trying to beat up on them. How have you noticed? Are they being more physical in practice now? Well, we haven't practiced uh, to prepare for a road game. It'll be today, mm -hmm. but I'm sure that that's something that they've been mindful of is just, again, bring some adversity, more so bring adversity. Uh, I won't call as many fouls today. You don't get as favorable whistle on the road. You know, that's not against officials or anything. It's just kind of the way it goes. Um, so we're, we're piping a little bit more adversity for, for everyone to just kind of get themselves as much preparation for those things as possible. It's a pretty darn good basketball team in Charleston. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, again, we, we schedule pretty aggressively. Um, got a lot of respect for their program. And if anybody knows the history of their program, they've been good for a long time. Had a couple down years, but for the most part, have always had really good players and, and has always been a team that's uh, played well in their league. They've transitioned conferences now, uh, but Earl Grant has done a tremendous job of in, instilling what he believes in. <coughs> And obviously, they have one of the best players in the country. And I'm not just talking about mid-major. I'm talking about one of the best players in the country. And in Riller, how do you? What do you consider as far as defending him? What do you? Do you have to do something special, or I don't not? know if we have to do anything special. Our focus will be on trying to limit his efficiency, throwing a lot of different bodies at him, trying to wear him down over the course of the game. You know, a lot of times with a guy like that, um, he's going to score because he's going to have so many opportunities. And you just want to make him work for everything he gets. Uh, we don't want to leave him open in transition or give him too many easy baskets that really make him feel good. And then he's making difficult shots later in the game because of that. So early on, we got to be really dialed in to making sure we know where he is. But we can't totally focus on him. Uh, Zeb Jasper, who starts at the point guard for them, is really good. He was a freshman when they came in here last year. And Brevin Galloway, who was a kid I've known for a really long time, can really, really shoot the basketball. So. Uh, we got a pretty good opponent, and I'm excited to see our guys uh, rise to the challenge. With Linda Waters uh, playing this ceremony that you just plan on having, how special is it for you to be a part of that? Uh, it means a lot. Um, obviously, that's, that's a little bit further down the road right now, focused on this game, but it'll be a great opportunity for our program and our fans uh, to acknowledge him and his, his uh, heritage and, and all that goes into that. So um, excited about being part of it, and it's something I'm looking forward to. I've never experienced anything like it. Now that you guys are, are two games in, are, how are you seeing your, your freshmen? Are they are they starting to speak the language a little bit more, starting to construct more sentences? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they're starting to understand better. You know, film always helps because uh, sometimes they think they're doing something that you know they may not necessarily understand where small differences uh, can be made. So they're definitely getting more accustomed to our language and, and the terminology we use on both ends of the court. And uh, I think they're starting to feel more comfortable just playing with the rest of the guys consistently instead of playing against them every day in practice. It's a big group of newcomers, but you know, how would you rate this group as far as how they care about defense and how they brought their defense in the first couple of games? Uh, as good as any group I've been around. Um, I was talking to one of my mentors earlier, and he was just asking about how I felt about their development. And I think what we have is just a more mature group of freshmen. You know, they're still young guys. They're all basketball kids. 
They grew up with the game. It means a lot to them. They have a lot of pride in performing and working hard at it. And so they've taken coaching well, uh, to taking some criticism well, and they've listened to the older guys, which is the most important thing. Guys like Avery, who's been used to play in big time high school games in front of big crowds, how do you think that'll affect their level of preparation going into their first road game? Well, this will be something totally different for all of them. I mean, I don't know what I can do to um, um, kind of accept maybe, I don't even know the word, give me an, an idea of what they're going to experience, but probably can't do anything until they get there. Because I, I would imagine this will be one of Charleston's biggest home games, but most well attended. You got a Power 5 team coming in on their home court. Um, so I don't know what kind of promotionals they've got going on, but I'm sure they're pulling out everything they have uh, to make sure they have a great environment. Um, and so with that said, we just have to make sure we're focused on the little things. Because I think when you start thinking about the big picture is where you kind of get yourself in trouble. Um, and Avery's played in big games, but so is Chris. You know, Keelan and Caleb have both played for state championships multiple times. Uh, I, I can't speak for all the crowds that Hedy may have or may not have been able to play in front of. And obviously Jonathan's been around the block. So most of the guys have pretty good experience, but this will be totally different for, for almost all of them. How has Hitty responded since Sunday or Saturday? Yeah, um, we didn't practice yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday was a mandatory off day for us. Uh, the report this morning is that he's doing better. Uh, he's not going to practice today. He's not doing that much better yet in terms of being able to take contact and get up and down. So we'll see tomorrow if he's able to practice. Then maybe he's available. But at this point, uh, we're certainly not expecting that. Do you remember your first road game as a player? Oh, man. First road game as a player. That was so long ago, man. Don't ask questions <laughs> like that. <laughs> I do not. I, honestly, I really don't. Mm -hmm. I remember, though, uh, playing against Charleston as an assistant coach. Okay. I think the last big non-conference home game that they had was in, I guess it would have been 2008. South Carolina went there. It was kind of one of those in-state deals. You don't do it often. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of like our football team went to Tulsa this year. Um, and we lost. <laughs> no. It was a big deal. And so I have a total understanding and appreciation for how good of a team they can have. And I've tried to kind of let our guys understand this is this is a really good basketball team, one that's projected to you know, be a contender for a championship and play an NCAA tournament, uh, and one who's got a player who's good enough to play and start for us. Um, and so we, we've got to prepare the right way for the next two days. Do you cherish a chance to go back to South Carolina? Uh, not I mean, particularly. I know you're not going back to where you played, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I know quite a few people yep. in the state. Obviously, spent a lot of time there, but I don't, I don't know if it has any true mm -hmm. significance in terms of how I'll think about the travel. Um, I'm just really excited to see our guys mm -hmm. go into a place. I think you don't find out who you really are as a team until you have to go on the road and, and figure out a way to beat a really good team, and we'll have that opportunity on Wednesday. Is there a difference in, in, in jitters if you can go back to your first road game as a head coach versus the jitters of being a player? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm always more nervous, I think, now coaching than I was ever as a player. I felt more in control of the situation, especially as a point guard. I had the ball in my hands most of the time. I was a kind of a leader on all the teams I played on. And, and now I'm just truly relying on that we've done our job to prepare them the right way and, and that they're going to go out there and execute. Um, my first road game as a head coach, I think, was probably true road game was a, a, a league game. It might have been in Norman, actually, uh, because we played uh, two neutral court games in Brooklyn that year, and then we played Florida State on a neutral court as well. So uh, that's a little bit different. I mean, obviously, that game had a little bit more significance <laughs> too. So none of these things have been easy. Is it important for you? You scheduled, you know, the Charlotte game last year, and now you have this Charleston game. Is it kind of important to, you know, not jump right into league play, but kind of get their their toes wet with these smaller schools? Yeah, I mean, I think it's important. Again, everything is by design in terms of the big picture, right? We we make plans with the big picture in mind. We don't talk about the big picture much because we can only focus on what we can control now. But I want our guys to not go into. I think our first league road game is in Lubbock, right? And not that Charleston's gonna be Lubbock, but it won't be foreign completely to them, that they're playing with a hostile crowd and uh, a team that's expected to be really good. So I think all these experiences through November and December are in order to help us prepare uh, for what we'll see come January and February. Is it going to be a strange Wednesday to not be here when science, signing day? Maybe. Not necessarily. Um, again, technology kind of covers all that. I'll, 
I'll either get text messages or I won't, or emails, and I won't, and we'll just we'll move forward like normal. I'll, I'll pretty much, I mean, the only difference is we play, so I'll be more probably focused on the game than what's happening, you know, locally or nationally or whatever it is. Um, so, but I'm excited about both. Is so, it kind of hard to do, um, you know, with a big day like signing day and like, still kind of worried about what's going on? Not necessarily. Um, I mean, the work's done. I mean, you know, I mean, so at this point, everything we're supposed to do at this point, we've done. And at that, on that day, I'm, I'm just worried about trying to win one game. You know, even even this game that just passed is behind us, and we're going to try to be our best for 40 minutes on Wednesday night. So no war room in the hotel room or anything like that? No, I mean, no, no, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> we, uh, we won't have that. We'll, we'll obviously check to make sure yeah. that. If we're supposed to be receiving paperwork that we are, but but our main focus will be on, you know, making sure that we're prepared for a really really good team. This has nothing to do with anything, but Lindy was telling us a story about a two-on-two -two rebounding drill from his freshman year, where Leighton Hammonds picked up Lucas Kassan. Do you remember that drill that Absolutely. day? Absolutely, I remember a lot of things about practices. I remember some practices from my freshman year. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's a drill we've implemented you know, several times when we needed to get their attention on the physicality. And, need to uh, have a little bit higher level of toughness but I remember that specific moment um, and it was a little frightening for everybody mostly Lucas because I'm honest <laughs> Lindy's or not Lindy uh, Layton he's a pretty happy-go-lucky guy and it's, I imagine he could turn it on then if he could he could um, he had an edge to him he didn't always play that way um, but he had it inside of him and, and that day we were able to pull it out the players doesn't respond well to that specific drill yeah, I mean, there's a handful of them that they know if they get a glance at the practice schedule that they tie their shoes a little tighter and make sure that they got mm -hmm. mouthpieces and things like that. But, um, yeah, I mean, every now and then you got to kind of ruffle their feathers a little bit and, and make sure that they understand the sense of urgency you got to play with. You're wearing shorts today. Should they be worried? I'm wearing shorts today. They should be worried. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Breaking out that, 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 that drill? No, not that. Not today, anyway. 